Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to discuss what I think is probably the biggest issue with the tuning system in Gran Turismo 7. Um, before we get started though, um, if you find this kind of content helpful, uh, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, let's just get started. So what I think is a huge problem is um, in particular events that are based on performance points or PP. <laughs> Try not to laugh. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to tame my inner child there, but uh, so the problem is this uh, performance point system is very broken with certain tuning settings. As you can see, when I'm changing settings, it actually changes the performance rating of my car, which is fair enough. But this opens the door for some very odd exploits. So I have my car set up right on the brink of this exploit just so I can show you what happens. And watch what happens to my performance points. I'll add one kilogram of ballast and I drop from 629.81 to 606.99. Now the reason for this is pretty simple. If you look at rotational G at 150 miles an hour, it went from 1.55 to 0. I'm pretty sure the game takes these stats on the left and combines them to get your PP rating. And if one of these stats is 0, it's going to drop your PP rating drastically which is a game changer for events like Daily Race B when they're based on maximum PP. You can do the same thing with power here. I'll drop the power and go to 605. So yeah, there are multiple ways to abuse this. You can really get some extra power and take some extra weight out of your cars with no detriment anywhere else by abusing this. And it's, it, it's not easy to figure out. This took me a while to actually figure out what was going on. So I just wanted to share it with you guys because I was seconds off the pace on this race for the longest time, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Then I looked at replays, people were doing 15, 20 miles an hour more than me on the straights, and then I finally put two and two together, and I figured out this is what it is. Unfortunately, this is just how it works, and we've got to deal with it unless they uh, address this in a future update. Now looking at numbers is great and all, but now I want to show you lap time comparisons of a normal setup and an optimized one, just to show you how big of a difference this makes. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to set a baseline lap with the car with no tune settings changed other than those to meet the performance points uh, cap. So all we've done is change the power and the weight output. So we have 354 horsepower and 3,199 pounds for weight and we're at 629.99 performance points. Everything else on the tune is absolutely stock as it comes in the car when you buy it. So we're going to set a baseline lap with this and see what we get.
now that we've established a baseline lap, we're going to switch over to what I've changed to exploit the performance points system. So you can see our performance points are pretty much exactly the same, 0.97 instead of 0.99, basically no difference. Uh, all the other tune settings are exactly the same, I've left those stock. But now we're able to run 429 horsepower, and we're over 100 pounds lighter. And the only difference that's making that possible is the gearbox. If you look at these gears, they're extremely short. And you'll see on the lap for this, that I actually run out of gear on the longest straightaways. I'm just sitting there at max RPM, not gaining any more speed. But that happens for such a short amount of time, it's irrelevant when you compare it to how much time you gain everywhere else on the track from better acceleration and cornering. So now we're going to look at this lap and compare it to the baseline. Here we are coming across the line, and you can see already, it's not even close. The, the new setup is just so much faster than the other one, even though we're topping out six gear. We're still hitting the same top speed, we just get there a lot quicker. And our pull out of the corners is so much stronger, because we have an extra 75 horsepower. We're over 100 pounds lighter, so the cornering's better, the braking's better. And you'll see that throughout the lap. Uh, every few corners or so, I'll look back really quick just so you can see how far back the ghost ends up. I did it right there, it's already over a second behind. And this is just a common theme throughout the lap. Neither of these laps are optimized, by the way. There's a lot of time in both of these, but this is just for the sake of demonstration. The laps don't need to be perfect for this. As we come across the line, we end up with a 202.7. Our baseline lap was a 205.9. So just from exploiting the performance point system, we gain over three seconds. And again, neither of these laps are optimized, but that's not the point. The point is, it is night and day different when you tune this way and take full advantage of how the performance point system works. I don't think it should work this way. I think performance points should only change based on what upgrades you have on the car and what potential those give the car. Your tune setting should not change your PP rating. But this is the way it is. And as much as it sucks, if you want to be competitive in daily races with PP limits, this is what you have to do. Well, that's all I got for this one, guys. I hope this provided some insight on building cars for PP limits. This is exactly how I built the Mazda Tenza for my world record on NURB GP. Uh, before the track limit exploits, that is. But uh, the video for the Mazda, as well as the track limit video, those links are both in the description. Also, before I go, I noticed the new patch makes credits really hard to grind for, even more so than they already were. So I figured I'd help you guys out a bit with my future videos and focus on building cars more that are given to you for free, just from progressing through the game or getting them from license tests or missions or things like that. So let me know in the comments if you'd want to see more videos like that. Uh, with that being said, though, please like the video if you find it helpful, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.